trust that the word of God will be a blessing to you. There's a lot of bad news out there. We're thankful that we can open our Bibles and find good news about one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this is a very significant week. Some call it Easter week. Others call it Holy Week or Passion Week, referring to the sufferings of Christ. The Jews know it as Passover. Annually, they celebrate this week as part of their rich history when God, in his mighty power, many millennia ago, judged Egypt and liberated the Jews from 400 years of cruel slavery. So they're celebrating this week as well. On this very day, the Lord Jesus riding on a donkey. Yes, this very day, 33 AD, he approached the city of Jerusalem. We know it as Palm Sunday. And as he looked over that very privileged city that by the end of the week, Friday, they would reject him. He wept. Tears of love and sorrow to think that such a privileged city would ultimately reject him as their Christ. You know, things had been intensifying the weeks leading up to the cross. The religious elite were growing increasingly concerned about their people becoming followers of Jesus. Are you a follower? Of the Lord Jesus. There's a well known citizen not too far from Jerusalem, and he had been dead for four days. His name was Lazarus. People from Jerusalem had provided grief support to the family over those days. And then the Lord Jesus arrives and brings Lazarus back to life. Amazing. This high profile sign. It was indisputable, and the news spread like wildfire. Religious leaders, they considered destroying the evidence because they wanted to silence the growing excitement about Jesus. So they actually thought of putting the man who had been raised from the dead, Lazarus, they actually contemplated putting Lazarus to death to quieten the people. They wanted to destroy the evidence that this man, Jesus, was God in human flesh. And so on the heels of this highly publicized miracle, the crowds were gathering for the big religious festival, the Passover, from all over the country. On this very day, yes, AD 33, as I said, known as Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem. That was Sunday. On Monday, Jesus showed what God thought of human religion that had become so corrupt. The arrogance and the power and the pride of the religious elite. He went into the house of prayer or into the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus did. He was only 33. And he chased the money makers out of the temple. He overturned the exchange tables. And he said to those people, you have turned the house of prayer into a den of thieves. That was the religion of the day. That's what had happened. This obviously didn't sit very well with the religious Pharisees and the Sadducees. They disdained. I don't know what you think of the Lord Jesus tonight. We're glad you're listening. But these religious people disdained the Lord Jesus Christ, his 33 year old. Galilean, poverty-stricken, self-proclaimed prophet. This nobody in their books. Out to usurp their authority. They were the trained ones. They knew the word of God. On Tuesday, that was Monday, on Tuesday of this week, and this is where we're going to read right now. The religious people were grilling Jesus trying to make a public embarrassment out of him. And so they were peppering him with questions and they wanted to convince all the crowds from the villages who had come into Jerusalem for the pa Passover feast. They wanted to convince the crowds that they had the upper hand, not this man, Jesus. 
they were in the know and just forget about Jesus. I wonder if anyone's whispering that in your ear. Look at you're taking this far too serious. There are bigger things in life to worry about than this man, Jesus. And the Pharisees, the religious people, they said, we have the answers. And they called Jesus a fraud. And in the midst of all these questions on this particular Tuesday, the Lord Jesus then has his turn of asking them a question. And that's what we're going to read in the Bible tonight. Just a few verses. It's in Matthew's gospel, chapter 22 and verse 41. I'll read from the New King James Version. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, well, how then does David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. They're quoting from the Old Testament, verse 45. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? Mm -hmm. How are they going to answer that question? Verse 46. And no one was able to answer him, that's Jesus, a word. Nor from that day on did anyone dare question him anymore. You see, friend, these religious people, they knew a lot of details. They had a lot of facts, but their minds were dark. They could not understand David's reverence for his son. So the Lord Jesus stumped them with his question, but it wasn't a riddle. But their spiritual blindness prevented them from knowing the answer. You know, there's a lot of religious people today, and they could speak to you for hours about what they know from the Bible. But when it comes to the truth that is so evident in the Bible, that salvation, eternal life, is through personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, plus nothing else. They are blind to that. They say, no, there has to be more to it. These, this wasn't a riddle that Jesus asked them, but their spiritual blindness prevented them from knowing the answer. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? Jesus asked. Here's the answer, just so I'm not going to dwell on this, but this is the answer that Jesus was looking for, the solution lies in the deity of the incarnate Christ. The man Christ Jesus here on earth was God in human flesh. They were ignorant of him. He was David's Lord, King David in the Old Testament. He was actually David's Lord in his deity. He was David's son in his humanity. That was a simple answer. But religion was blind. Now, I want to bring this home to you. We're so glad you're with us. This is a question of critical importance. There are many questions on the minds of people in 2021. Some are incidental. Others are critical. Some are short-term questions with no real long-term impact. Like, where should I buy my groceries now that that chain is closed? What will I wear today? Part of the day, I meet to meet people and I have some interviews. But another part of the day, I think that um, this attire wouldn't be appropriate. Or who won the game last night? Finally, there's a game to watch during this pandemic. So who won it? You know, those are seemingly important questions at the moment, but they really have no long-term impact. There are more significant questions like what do you think of attending college after high school versus joining the workforce? I don't know whether any of you are young or not. Maybe that's a question you're you're wrestling with. What do you think of the need to stay out of debt? How quickly should I pay off my student loan? They are definitely more significant questions with longer term impacts. But the most critical question you will ever face in life 
is the one that Jesus asked these religious people. And here it is. What do you, not do we, what do we think of Christ, the royal we? What do you think of Christ? It is of critical importance. I hope you're thinking how you might answer that. Like, what does Christ mean to you? If you had to write a paragraph about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he means to you personally, what would you say? I want to ask you a fairly straightforward question. And I will lower my voice. Sometimes we, in the intensity of the moment, we can elevate our voice. Um, a friend of mine used to say, you know, we're, we're not preaching at you. We're preaching for you. So we elevate our voice and seem to get somewhat intense. Well, there are some pretty significant issues at stake. This is a question I want to ask you right now. What is the only difference, the only difference between a person who arrives in heaven versus someone who lands in hell? Do you want me to repeat the question? What is the only, the single difference between a person who arrives in heaven versus someone who wakes up in hell? You know what it is? The value they place on Christ. That's the only difference. What does Christ mean to you? And so we're not asking you about where um, you go to church. We're not asking you where, what do you think of David Hamilton's church in Midland Park? That is not the worry of our heart. It is what does Christ mean to you? And that is those that was a question that Jesus himself asked these religious people. What think ye of Christ? People don't necessarily like that question. Of all the questions that a person can ask, it seems to provoke the darkest emotional response. You can ask people a lot about a lot of questions you can ask them about the weather you can ask them about their favorite sport you can ask them about the business climate you can ask them about that huge ship that is blocking the suez canal you can ask many things you can when there's no pandemic you can go to a starbucks sit down there and you can shoot the breeze you can chat about anything the little prelude before a business meeting begins, the small chatter, talk about anything. But this question gets people uptight. So what do you think of Christ? And not only is there avoidance, there's incredible intolerance towards that question. For a society that is known for its tolerance and its respect, it seems to be the one question that people are incredibly intolerant of. It's just like unwrapping a hand grenade at a dining room table. Like just the chairs move back. Okay, time to go. Let's clear out. That's the facial expressions. I've had my own experience with this at a family reunion. I've often told it, but um, my mother's side of the family, we were having a family reunion at a one-room schoolhouse quite a few years ago. And um, some of my cousins I hadn't seen, well, I had never seen them. I'd never met them. And um, so everyone was chatting outside by the picnic tables. And my aunts here on the 
on Prince Edward Island. They said, oh, did you meet so-and-so? It's all. She went to that Ivy League university in the States. Ooh. Like, in other words, you should listen to her. So she was making her rounds and it was, she was very nice and kind and friendly, but she was picking up blades of grass and she was telling them what she had learned. And she said, I believe God is in this blade of grass and she'd pick a leaf off and God is in this leaf. And you'd say, oh my, you have to talk to her. And uh, one of my other cousins was a Christian. I was getting a little tired of all of this and um, this one cousin uh, talking about her pantheism. So he just said, not obnoxiously, he just said, I would like to tell you what Christ means to me. And you would think someone dropped an atom, a nuclear weapon into that little schoolyard. They literally, I remember some of my cousins sitting on the picnic table and they just off the table like that. And some of them took cover in the little one room schoolhouse. It was a question that they didn't like. You could talk about pantheism, humanism, economics, politics. But I would like to tell you what Christ means to me. What do you think of Christ? Remember what I said? The only difference between someone who goes up versus someone who goes down is not their looks. It's not how much money they have in the bank. It has nothing to do with the church that they attend or their, relig their religious rituals, whether they've been baptized or whether they've taken Holy Communion or the sacraments or remembered the Lord at the Lord's Supper. Like it, none of those things matter when it comes to your eternal destiny. The only difference between someone who goes up versus someone who goes down is what Christ means to them. So what does Christ mean to you? You know, you can mention his name in blasphemy or a swear word. No one seems to squirm. But mention that you love and worship Jesus Christ, that he is your personal savior. You immediately become a misfit. People become very uncomfortable when that question is interjected into a conversation. If we were to be alone together for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and I just sort of ask this question to you. Are you comfortable answering that question? Could you summarize what Jesus means to you in one sentence? I can. Jesus Christ is my personal savior who died on the cross for my sins. Are you able to answer this question? What do you think of Christ? It is a very personal matter. You alone are responsible for the answer. And so a lot of people this time of year will go to church. Um, if they're open due to the pandemic, some are, some aren't. But a lot of people know about the historical Christ. I mentioned 33 AD. They know those details. They know that Jesus Christ did more in those 33 years than any other person did ever in their entire lifetime. He actually changed the calendar before Christ and Anno Domini, AD, 33 AD, after Christ. They know about the historical Christ. They know that Jesus Christ is the founder of the Christian faith. They know he's a great ethical leader. Even Einstein said that. Oh, he said, yeah, I believe in Jesus, that he was an ethical leader and he did tremendous works and he loved the beautiful stories of Jesus. A lot of people know him as a great humanitarian, a benefactor, someone who loved his enemies and did good to those who hated him. He prayed for those who despitefully used him. They can cite those sections of the Sermon on the Mount. But just because you know all that about Jesus doesn't mean that you are a Christian. You could study the life of Christ all your life and die in your sins. You could do a presentation at school on his birth, his miracles, his death, his resurrection. 
you could know the chronology of his life, all the miracles he did, and yet never have your own sins forgiven. So let me ask you again, what does Christ mean to you? Did Christ do anything for you specifically that has changed the value you place on him? I had the honor of speaking at a, a funeral of a Christian this week on Thursday. He was 88 years old. Seven children and their spouses and grandchildren and great grandchildren were there. I don't know whether any of them even know Christ. But this man was watching TV one day. He was 47. And uh, he was bothered about his sins. And he heard about Jesus Christ dying for his sins. And he trusted Christ as his savior. The joy flooded his soul. And he thought that he was the only person on Prince Edward Island who ever realized such a thing. He ran from his house to the priest in the community and he, he knocked on the door and he he sat down. He said, look, at, I've just discovered this. He really thought he was the only person who knew Jesus Christ in a personal way. He told his wife, who was not a Christian, he said, I, I, I'm a, a new creature inside. He didn't even know his Bible. He didn't know that was in Second Corinthians 5. That if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creature, a new creation. But he knew he had been changed from the inside out. And he found out there were a few other Christians on Prince Edward Island. And at 88, he was diagnosed with cancer three weeks ago. And he went home to heaven on Monday of this week, last week, and we buried him on Thursday. What did Christ mean to him? Everything, everything. And he lived those 41 more years to prove that he loved the Lord Jesus in a way that he could never articulate. And he's now at home with the Lord Jesus. True Christians love to be asked that question. They don't squirm. People don't clutch their pearls and get nervous or, or start playing with their fingers when you ask them about uh, um, what they think of Christ. I know sometimes we might be shy and, and stumble or over our words if someone asked a, a profound question beyond the weather. I'm not talking about just shyness or stumbling over words. When a question goes deep, are you comfortable asking this deep question? What? Does Jesus Christ mean to you? And I'll ask the question again. Did Christ do anything for you specifically that has changed the value that you have placed on Jesus Christ? You know, Doris and Harold lived out in Oregon and they went late August, August the 25th. They thought they would go out into the wilderness and up into the mountains and perhaps do some elk hunting and just some wilderness journeying through the mountains and uh, the truck got stuck in the mud. Now they weren't spring chickens. Harold was 74 and Doris was 76 and they couldn't get the truck out of the mud. They walked and they walked and they walked for help. Later in the day, Doris said, Harold, I think I'll head back to the truck while you go get help. So she headed back to the truck, but she never made it back to the truck she got lost. The hunters found Harold, but there were no signs of Doris anywhere. This search went on until August the 31st, and then they called off the search. 13 days went by since no signs of, there were no signs of Doris, 13 days. They planned the memorial service for Doris. She was gone. Two state troopers, they were off duty on this particular day, Travis Ash and Chris Hawkins. Now, if I asked you, what does Travis Ash and Chris Hawkins, what do those names mean to you? Well, you may have read this story in the news. 
And you say, well, I read it in the news. It's something that happened out in Oregon. Is that all those two guys mean to you? Travis Ash and Chris Hawkins asked Doris. Yes, on their day off, they said, look at, I know they have a memorial service planned. It's been days now. But we're going to go out and look volunteer. They found Doris, an extremely rough terrain deep in the canyon. She was lying next to a little brook, emaciated, dehydrated, cold, fractured hip, a weak voice. And she looked up into their eyes and she said, oh, my God, I'm so glad to see you. What do you think Chris Hawkins and Travis Ash mean to Doris? Believe me. She would probably be on the radio shows and TV shows when she gets strong enough. This is what they mean to me. What does Jesus Christ mean to you? Do you have a personal, precious, precise moment when in your sins, oh, not a physical rescue, not a physical salvation, a spiritual rescue when you realize I am perishing in my sins and Jesus Christ died on a cross for my sins? Oh, I love him. I adore him. I embrace him as my savior. What does Jesus Christ mean to me? Oh, do you have five minutes? Do you have 10 minutes? Can I send it on a postcard? Can I write you a letter? Can I send you an email? Can I text you a message? I would love to tell you what Jesus means to me. That's the language of a real Christian. Oh, I know there are a lot of nominal Christians because they go to a Christian church. They've, they've embraced some of the Christian rituals of the church. That makes no one a Christian. A genuine, authentic Christian is someone who has a personal connection with Jesus Christ. And they love him from the depths of their hearts because they realize without Jesus, I would perish forever in a lost eternity. Go to the Bible. Paul, ask the apostle Paul. Paul, what does Jesus Christ mean to you? Paul would tell you, oh, I was a hater of Jesus. I was out to destroy every Christian on the planet. I thought he was an imposter. He was the biggest fraud ever. And when I couldn't get at him, I thought I would arrest every Christian. And I wanted to see every Christian executed until one day on the Damascus Road, I found out that the very one that I hated was the one who loved me. And he died on the cross for my sins. So, Paul, in one sentence, could you tell me what Christ means to you? Paul would say, oh, you must have read it. Galatians 2, verse 20. Here's what he means to me. The son, and he wrote it. You can read it in your Bible. The son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. Oh, yes, he died for the sins of the world. But that doesn't make anyone a Christian. It's personal. Paul said it's personal. He loved me and he gave himself for me. Ask the apostle Peter, St. Peter, 1 Peter 3, verse 18. Are you asking me what I what Jesus means to me? Read it, 1 Peter 3, verse 18. Christ once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And then he wrote. We are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. What does Christ mean to you? Ask the Apostle John. Read John's words in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. John wrote, we love him. We love him because oh, he first loved us. Ask Thomas. Thomas would say, I was one of the disciples. You know, after he was nailed to the cross, I did. I figured that was the end. I figured it was all over. But that night in the upper room, my I was so filled with doubts. And I saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to me, Thomas, here's my hands. Reach. 
put your hand into my side. I was wounded, but I am alive. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. What does Christ mean to you? Come to Prince Edward Island and knock at our door, ring our bell, and say, Peter, what does Jesus mean to you? I would say, when I was 12, just turning 13, I found out that Christ died on the cross for a little sinner like me. And I just, by simple, young, childlike trust and faith, I rested on the word of God. I trusted Christ as my personal savior. I'm not a teenager anymore, you can tell by these white hairs. And over all those decades, I've had the peace and the joy of knowing Christ personally as my savior. And I'm absolutely sure I'm going to heaven. It has nothing to do with my church. It has everything to do with the one who died to save me. As I close, I want to go over this with you. What you think of Christ will determine your destiny. Are you willing to get on the knees of your heart? If you can't get on your knees physically, could that be the posture of your heart? And acknowledge that you are a sinner. And without God's mercy and intervention, you'll be lost in hell forever. And then can you look to cross the Lord Jesus and understand what the Bible says that Christ died for the ungodly one? Can you accept the fact that I am the ungodly one? And the Bible, God's word says that if I'm ungodly, Christ died for me. Friend, that's what it is. It's trusting God. It's receiving his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you before I pray. What? Do you think of Christ? Thank you very much for listening.